In this video, I'm going to show you how to change out the intake manifold gasket on your 2001 to 2007 Dodge Grand Caravan or Chrysler Town and Country, and this will apply to both the 3.3 liter and the 3.8 liter motors. Welcome to Javo's Garage. Here we do how-to car repair videos, we do garage projects, and I also do tool reviews on things that I use every day with a focus on providing you with the in-depth details that you normally won't find in other videos. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Let's get started on the intake manifold of this Grand Caravan. Now on this project today, I'm not only gonna be doing the intake manifold gasket, but while I'm in there, it only makes sense to go ahead and replace out my spark plug wires and my spark plugs. And then naturally when you open it up and you do this kind of cleaning and whatnot, I wanna go ahead and do a nice fresh oil change on it, replace the filter and get that done. And I'm even gonna be doing the oil pan gasket as well. Now, not all of these repairs that I'm going to be doing today are going to be included in this video because I've already made other videos. And when I get to those points, I'll provide you links to those videos so you can go over there and watch those. The focus of today's video is going to be changing out the intake manifold gasket and everything that's needed to be done to make sure that gets done properly is going to be included here. So let's get started. Let's start with the parts that we're going to be using today. Now for my intake manifold gasket, I always use the Ferro Pro gaskets. They've done great for me. The part number of this unit is MS. 92808-1 and this has both your upper intake gasket and your lower intake gasket and I'll show you in a bit exactly what those are and then you're also going to need some Permatex Ultra Black Gasket Maker so we have this here and then for the other things I'm going to be doing here along the way I have just some brake cleaner here that I'll be using and uh, this month AutoZone had the better deal on brake cleaner so I bought it from them I'm going to be changing out the spark plugs and the wires while I'm there. And once again, I have a separate video for that. But just to show you here, we have 35-6317. I have my new spark plugs here that I'm going to be putting in. I always use the NGK V-Powers. They've done really great for me. The part number on these is LZTR5A-13. And these are the ones I always use. I got six of those. And then the other thing we're going to need to do is change the oil when we're done. And all your parts places have oil change specials. And so today I was able to get the CarQuest high mileage 520 oil and the filter. And I was able to get that for $25. So we're going to change those out. And then last but not least, I'm going to change out the oil pan gasket when we're all done. And that part number is OS. 30622 um, R. And so that, once again, I have a separate video for that. I'll link to it to you for there. But I always start with doing the intake manifold gasket. And when you have everything apart and you're cleaning all that up there, it's always just a good idea when you're done. You really need to go in and change the oil when you're done with that so that you get all of that out that could have gone down into your oil pan. You don't want to be putting that up into the motor. So let's get started on removing our existing intake manifold gasket. Our intake manifold is located up along here. So we have quite a few things that are connected to it and we got to get into the back side. And so what I always do, the first step for me is going to be to remove this cowling and the wiper motor assembly that's here. And this will open up everything along the back so I can easily get my tools in there, get my work done, get to everything and get the job done. Now I've already made this video and so I'm gonna skip past this for you and I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. I'm gonna put a link to it up above here in the description for you. So you can go there and watch that video as to how to do that. Let me get this out and we're gonna move on. Now we have our wiper motor assembly is all out of the way so we have good access to get to everything along the back. Next step is we want to disconnect the negative from our battery cable so we don't short anything out. We also have to disconnect a fuel line from our intake manifold and so we don't want our fuel pump to accidentally go off and spray fuel out. So let's disconnect the negative. And set that off to the side and I always like to tuck it down in there so that way it doesn't have a possibility of popping back up and touching onto the battery. 
We're just going to start removing some of the peripheral things here from around our motor and just start giving us access. Now we have a vacuum line here that runs over to our brake booster there. So we're just going to disconnect that and kind of tuck it back up in here so it's out of the way. You also have another vacuum line here as well. And this one here is not cooperating with us. Let me do this. There we go. And we have this vacuum line here as well. And we're just going to disconnect it. Sorry, my arm's going to be in the way a little bit with this. And we're just have that disconnected. Now this is tie wrapped onto your throttle cables here. So it's just going to stay right there. While we're moving along here, we'll go ahead and do our intake sensor here. You have that red tab. You need to push that tab out like you see here. Once you have that done, press on this release tab and pull backwards. Just like that, we have that released. Now the next thing we're gonna tackle is our line here that comes from our air box into our uh, valve cover here. And the best thing to do with this, a lot of times you wanna grab it and start pulling and yanking here. And what'll happen is this hose will crack here. So the better thing to do is to start on that side and get it disconnected just like this. And then what I always do to try and break it free because they'll stick down in here. And that is I'll just start turning the pipe just so that we can make sure we have it broken free. And then I'll start lifting up while I'm wiggling it. And just like that, we get the pipe off without breaking it. Now let's take care of our throttle cables. These come up along here and connect into our throttle body down here. Now how you can do this is first you can undo these two bolts and they're an eight millimeter. A lot of times what I'll just do is take this and lift it back by hand. You can pull the cable up and that one popped out so fast I barely got a chance to show you how that works. Let me put that back in so you can get a, a visual of how they work. So when I tilt it back, there's an opening on this side and all you'll do is just take the cable, pull it forward and you'll see it just pops out like that. Now the back ones are usually a bit more, but that one came out easily too. So now we have our cables disconnected. There's two eight millimeter bolts here. We'll disconnect, we'll take those out now. Once that's done, we can just lift this up and we're just gonna set it over here to the side and out of the way. Now, as I'm going along and doing stuff like this, for example, like these two bolts that I just took out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and put these fasteners back in here. I've done this enough, I know where these all go, but it just makes life easier because then you're not hunting things down and trying to figure out where all your parts went to. When you go back to reassemble it, you just you have your parts where they're supposed to be and it makes it easier for you to find them. Next up, we're going to disconnect our power steering reservoir, which is here. You have two eight millimeter fasteners here and then down below, you're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut. And basically I'm gonna have to take this out cause there's no way to get a camera in there. And then I'll show you what that looks like. Now we'll get to the bolt that's underneath. And like I said, once I get it out, I'll show you how this works. Cause I can't get a camera in there, but I can show you how I actually get to it. And so I just have my 10 millimeter extended sock, deep socket with a six inch extension. And basically you'll kind of work it between your power steering hose and your spark plug line. And if you look down in there, you'll see that nut. There it is. And you don't take the nut off. All you do is loosen it. And once you do that, you'll just lift up on this and it comes out of the way. Now, hopefully you can get a good view from your angle, but right here, you'll see how it has this groove in here and this will go down and rest on this post. And then all you do is loosen this nut up to be able to lift it off. Now, naturally, when you go to reinstall it, you'll just tighten that nut down. But since this is plastic, you don't wanna tighten it real hard. You just want it snug so it holds it in place. We want to remove our EGR tube here. These are all, you have two bolts down here, two fasteners up here as well. These are all eight millimeter. You'll want to take these out and then this hose will come off. When you're taking this off, make sure to get that gasket for your EGR valve. Now, a lot of times these here are going to be so worn out, 
you're gonna have to replace them this one here doesn't look too bad we'll take a look at it here once we get it going if you need to replace it, it's no big deal these run like three dollars it's always not a bad idea why you have it out but we'll go ahead and take this out and set it off to the side we're gonna remove our line coming in from our air cleaner here into our throttle body and back here you have a sensor and hopefully you'll be able to see that from where you're at and it has the little red tab and you'll just press that red tab in and sometimes these red tabs can be a lot of fun with Chrysler just like that and then you'll just press the tab and just kind of wiggle it and that will remove our sensor so there's that red tab you'll just press that back press down on the retention there and then pop that off of there once you do that you have your hose clamp on here these just use an eight millimeter once again on these and i'll just loosen that up like that once that's done you have a clip and this one here is actually missing it i'm gonna have to get another one you'll have a metal retaining clip right here this one is missing so i'll get one and then on the back side directly right down right here you'll have another metal clip and you'll just pop that off like so and now you can start to move that what i'll do is i'll start prying here pull this off now you can just lift it up and then just work this off here to the side and there we go now we're going to remove our coil pack and this bracket here that holds it in place and to do that i'm going to remove my spark plugs now these are the original factory plugs and i know that because they're numbered you see it's got six four this here is number two and I'm sure it's a number, but it's always on the back side. There you go, which means you have one, three, five back here. Now, in this case, the way these are lined up, it's actually five, one, three, and along the front, it's two, four, and six. You're gonna need to keep track of this if you're gonna do exactly what I'm doing here when you put them on. So how your cylinder orientations work on this motor is you have number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And your spark plug wires basically come in and you have number two here number four goes to the middle number six goes to the outside on the back side though it's different number five is to the center to the inside number one is to the middle and number three is to the outside and i'm going to go ahead now and just disconnect these and what i do is you always twist these and then pull on them and that way they come off much easier Once you do that on the back side, you have your wiring harness that's for your coil pack and it has that red retaining clip. Once again, you'll just push that so that it pops through to the other side. And these things can be really stiff. There we go. Just like that. So you move that over like that. Here's your little tab that you're gonna press. And then I'll just use my little pry bar to help kind of get it going. And there we go. So that's off now. We have two nuts that are on posts here. These are 10 millimeter. We'll go ahead and take those off. Once you do that, you'll just remove your coil pack like so. I'll remove the tray. Now I'll put the nuts back on there because then I know where everything's at. And what this does is this exposes two of our intake manifold bolts that are located right there. Now we want to remove this hose from our upper intake plenum. And to do that, we have a retention clamp right here. And I'm going to try and do this with my hands out of the way. And I'll just grab that clamp and kind of squeeze it. And I'm working backwards here from the way I normally work. And we'll just set that up like that. And now that's off of there. Now I'm going to use my just my small pry bar once again. And I'm just going to get up underneath there and start to pop that up. You want to be careful not to break the hose. And there we have it just like that we'll just keep lifting and once it's up like that then we can just kind of move it and set it off to the side just like that and it's out of the way now we need to come over here and we need to disconnect our electrical over here and with this one here you have a retaining tab one of those locking tabs that has to slide and it's on the bottom so let me get my thumb under here and just like that i'll slide that back and then You'll just pull that off. So now that I have it off, you'll see it has that red retaining tab and the clip. We have one more that's down here. This one doesn't have one of those retaining tabs on it. So that one, you'll just pinch it and pull it off of there. And these have been on here for quite some time. So there we go. And that's that harness there. 
So we have those all disconnected. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and remove our upper intake plenum and get it out of the way so we can actually get to our electrical and our fuel line that's down below. We have eight bolts that secure our upper intake manifold and we're gonna go ahead and remove those. And now all you'll do is just lift up on your manifold and sometimes they'll stick a little bit because of those gaskets in that. And we still have a vacuum line that's under here and we'll just pull this off just like that. And now we can go ahead and remove our intake manifold. This is our upper plenum by the way. So you'll see it has these different rings here and some of them is stuck here onto the manifold. But we'll go ahead and we'll set this off to the side. We're gonna clean this all up and make it look nice and new again before we reinstall it. I accidentally dropped one of my bolts there, taking them out. That's where one of these magnets comes in really handy because I can reach down in there and get that taken out. While we're still working on this side, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the wiring harness that leads up into all of our injectors. We also have our coil pack, our air temp sensor, things of that nature in here. So once again, I'm just gonna use my little pry bar, push that over. Then I'm gonna go up underneath and I'm gonna pry it up off of this little bar that it's resting on. That just gives me a little bit more room. You're gonna press real hard down on this back tab and give it a pull. And these things, especially when they've been in a, a motor like this for as long as this has, they can be kind of a pain. So you're gonna have to work with it a bit. But uh, let me press down a little bit harder on that. And there you go. So now that we have that out of the way, I'll just tuck it back over here so it's no longer in front of what we're working on. Now what we wanna do is disconnect our fuel line. And with these, what I have found easiest, naturally we have our battery disconnected. You wanna make sure you do that before you do this. But this part here, this little plastic tab, is basically what you're gonna to have to push in to this fitting and actually slide it off. It's real similar to plumbing fittings you'll find like under your sink. But what makes it easier is to push this back up onto the tube. You'll see they'll come back a little bit, so push it all the way up. And then what you'll do is just press this plastic ring in. And what I always do is I'll cover it up just in case it's under some kind of pressure. You don't wanna get a face full of fuel. And then I'll just slide it right off of that tube. And just like that, there we go. Now, now that I know it's not pressurized, let me do it again for you so you can see it and I'll keep a rag under here to catch it. So you'll press this all the way up, press this plastic ring in, and then this just slides off just like that. And then what you can do is set it off to the side facing up, that way it doesn't spill all the fuel out. Now one of the things I will tell you is when you take your intake manifold out, this fuel rail here is gonna be filled entirely with fuel. So a lot of times what I do is I have a little vacuum cap and I'll put that little cap on there. And then once I get it out of here, I'll dump that into a container. But that way it keeps from spilling fuel all over the engine compartment. And this one here will fit beautifully. So I'll just slide that up over there. And that now keeps it from leaking fuel out as I do my work. What I like to do for safety's sake while I'm getting everything else done and ready to go, just to be sure you don't have something accidentally go down one of these intake tubes and go down into your motor is, I'll just take some tape and just kind of put it over that. And it's not gonna stick a lot, but it's just enough that should you drop a screw or something like that, it's not gonna go falling down your intake manifold and then you're taking your motor apart. It's just a temporary thing to just keep debris and something like a screw or a bolt from falling down inside of there. We're on the driver's side of our intake manifold and these two posts here is where your coil pack was sitting. So now we're looking at what's underneath it. Here is your thermostat housing. And so we're gonna have to disconnect our hoses here and we have a hose back here that's coming from our heater. Um, but we're gonna have to drain our coolant out for that. And we're gonna go down below for that. But before we do, we need to disconnect our sensor here. And this has one of those red retaining tabs and it's gonna be kind of hard to get to cause it's on the back side of this one. But I'm gonna just kind of work inside of there 
and there we go we have that off now you'll just press this tab and just start pulling on and this one's coming out pretty easy so this one's good so we're underneath on the driver's side bottom of your radiator and this here is where we're going to drain the coolant out of our system and if i move up over here hopefully i can get us a better angle and right back in here there's your drain valve to drain your coolant out now you see it's got the little uh the little um barbed fitting there not really barbed but it's got the little nipple sticking out there on the bottom and that's where you'll connect a hose up to it and then that way you can just drain it straight into your catch pan so it doesn't make a big mess everywhere now the valve there you see there sticking out that has the little tab you'll just turn that to the left or counterclockwise to drain your fluid out and then when you're done all you have to do is turn it back to the right and tighten it back up again Now that we have our coolant drained out of our system, we're ready to go ahead and disconnect our two hoses here, and then we're able to take out our intake manifold. So I'm gonna start with the back one here. It just has those kind of standard retention clamps on here, and I'm just gonna squeeze that, slide that forward. Then the best thing to do is to kind of grab the hose and twist it, just to kind of break it free. Here we go from there now if you have an issue with that I also have one of these kind of tools and this is designed to go in there and kind of break that hose free from your fitting however we seem to be twisting here so if we're lucky we may be able to just pull this right off of here and there we have it so we now have that disconnected we'll just kind of set that hose here off to the side now we need to take care of our upper radiator hose so we're just going to do the same thing with that clamp as well and we're just going to slide it back onto the hose just like that Let's see if this side will be as easy to turn and it's not so now we're going to just take our tool here once again this just kind of goes back inside of there you want to be careful because you don't want to come up and go through the hose and then have to replace your your hose and you'll see how that's just working in then you just kind of work it around and it will begin to break that free and I think we've done it let me hit this side real quick and just like that we are free so now we'll just go ahead and start working that off let that drain out a little bit below. I hear it dripping a bit. And there we go. You have eight intake manifold bolts that secure the manifold in place. We have two that's here on the end. You see that you have two back over here as well. You have two in here and two in here. Now the ones on this side face towards the back of the motor. The ones on this side face towards the front. Now the reason I have my six inch extension is if you'll go right here next to your uh, fuel injector, you'll feel it go down and rest on to the head of the bolt and then you can just loosen it up and bring it out. Just like that. And I'll just go through now and work my way through all these different bolt heads. Once I've done that, what I found to be the easiest way to remove the bolts is to use a magnet such as this. And I can just come down and I can grab them and just pull them out just like you see here. So now for this side, I'll just come in here, go down to the head and pull out my bolts. And then this one here on the end, you can just get to and you'll want to take it off with this little plate that supports your wiring harness for the fuel injection. Now everything's disconnected and you're ready to remove your intake manifold. And normally how I'm gonna do it is I just kinda grab it up under here and then grab here and just lift straight out. And you wanna be careful and try and get any of this debris that may be here towards the sides. Keep a look there first and get that moved in so it doesn't fall inside to the internals of your motor when you take this out. So now that we have that ready, 
we just reach inside of here and lift straight up and there we have our intake manifold is removed now you want to remove your lower intake manifold gasket and on each end it's held in place with a 10 millimeter bolt that squeezes it down there onto the block so I'll go ahead and loosen those now now it's not uncommon for these little metal tabs to come loose with the intake manifold now what you'll do is just start working your intake manifold gasket free just like this and we'll go to the other end by the way be really careful with the edges on these things it sounds funny but they're super thin and super sharp and a few times over the years I've pulled on those in the wrong way and uh, I've gotten cut pretty good from them so just be careful while you're pulling those out now I'll come to this side I'll just lift up on it and just like that our intake manifold gasket is removed now we just need to clean up this whole area but before we do we need to cover the open part of our motor so none of that debris falls down inside the motor now I have my shop towel dispenser and what I do is I'll take four towels and I'll bend it in the middle at the four and then what I'll do so I have two towels so it's twice the thickness and then I'm gonna double it up again and so what I do is I'll fold it like that and then I'll carefully take it in here and tuck it down into position so that it covers up everything in here so now we have that covered so I can get in there now and clean now as I clean I use my shop vac so that it kind of sucks it out as I clean but this is once again just another safety thing I don't want anything to go up inside my motor. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'll take individual towels and I'll take them and fold them in half like this. So I'll start with it open like this. I'll fold it in half and then I'll fold it in half again. Then I'll fold it this way and then this way like so and then with this I'll take this and I will stuff these into the openings to keep anything from going down inside just like that I'll do that on all my openings including my coolant passages that way I don't have to worry about anything falling inside the motor then I can clean it get it prepped and then put the intake manifold back in all of our openings have now been secured and we're ready to go ahead and the first thing we're gonna do is just vacuum and take care of all the loose debris and then we'll go through and we'll clean it up and get our surfaces ready for our new gasket. I have the valley for our intake manifold all cleaned up now. Just thought I'd bring you in for a closer look so you could just see what this looks like. Down through there. So we are ready to begin putting in our intake manifold. However, before we do, I'll show you my parts, all of our manifolds and everything like that and everything I've cleaned up so that we're ready to go.